Okay, in this next objective we're really dealing with uh, questions about how surveys are designed and there's just some terminology that you need to learn to get these questions right. The first important one is the difference between quantitative and qualitative and basically when you ask a question or give an answer you can do it in a numbers way or a non-numbers way. Numbers would be quantitative. Quantity means amount or number, so that's a good way to remember that. Qualitative is some other way. If you say something is lousy, that's qualitative. If you say, I give it a two out of five stars, that's quantitative because numbers were involved. So let's look at this question. It says, classify the data set ounces in various buckets of water as either quantitative, qualitative, or neither. So when they say classify the data set, they mean there might be a lot of different buckets of water that have different number of ounces of, of, of water in them. And in this case, the answer is going to be quantitative because we measure ounces in numbers and that's what the data set would look like. This bucket has 12 ounces, this bucket has 64 ounces. So that's quantitative, not qualitative. All right, let's look at this next one. And this is actually a little bit trickier. They're asking you to figure out which survey question is unbiased. And in an unbiased question, what you want is no language that makes one thing sound better or worse than another. And you usually want a choice um, that doesn't seem to slant it one way or another. I'm actually going to start from the bottom and go up here. And D says, are you dissatisfied with the poor service of your present electric company? This is biased. And the reason it is, you know, when you ask a person, they may or may not be dissatisfied, but if you suggest that the service is poor um, without knowing that, um, that's bias. So this is a question that's biased in such a way that more, more people would tend, up, t tend to answer this as, yeah, I don't like my service. So that's biased. Let's look at C. C says, do you prefer bringing a healthy lunch to school or eating at the local burger place? This one's a little trickier, but this one's also biased. And it's the word healthy that makes the bringing a lunch from home sound a lot better. If you wanted to make this a less biased question, you'd say, do you prefer to bring your lunch from home or eat at a restaurant? That would be less biased. Let's look at B. Do you think mature 17-year-olds should be able to vote in spite of their age? Again, we've got some language here that tends to make um, you want to answer one way. Well, of course, if the 17-year-olds are mature, they should be able to vote, uh, even though they're 17. Uh, but of course, not all 17-year-olds uh, are mature, and who gets to say what's mature or not? This is a question that seems to be biased to make us want to allow 17-year-olds to vote. And then A says, do you prefer public television or cartoon shows? Now, public television and cartoon shows, those are pretty basic descriptions. It's just what they are. We're given a choice here, not just one thing to choose. So this looks like a, a less biased question. So I would go with this one for which one is unbiased. And then finally, we've got one other thing to look at here. The difference between open option survey and closed option survey. The question says, Cliff asks each student in his class, which is your favorite pet animal? And then maybe there's just a blank there. They could answer anything. They could answer cat, dog, they could answer iguana, uh, they could make something up that doesn't even exist. So that's an example of an open option survey. There's no specific choice. But if you said, um, which pizza topping is better, pepperoni or sausage, and you only have those two options, that's a closed option survey. So in this one, that's an open option survey. So a little bit of terminology to get used to with surveys. Okay.